Hello there, peoples, and welcome to the Servants of the Dice Gods channel. I figured before we get started with the meat of this video, I should probably explain what's going to be happening around here and who you'll see in the content we produce. To begin with, my name is Anthony, and I am a huge board game fanatic. Not to the point where it's my entire life, but it's something I thoroughly enjoy and put a lot of effort towards. I do tend to have a more casual mindset towards this stuff though, and that has led to some rather hilarious escapades with me and my buddies in the various group games we play. This channel is basically just to share those escapades and to provide some more content around YouTube for games like X-Wing, Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and the Transformers TCG. I'm honestly not expecting this video to go huge, but if you are watching this, consider hitting the subscribe button to show me you like the stuff you just heard about and want to see it. I'll produce an official channel intro video later, but since this is my first video, I just wanted to get that out there. But enough of that nonsense, on to the main presentation. So by now, those of you in the X-Wing community know that the Summer Points update has been released by FFG. Now, it doesn't go in, into effect until July 10th, but that doesn't mean I could just sit around and wait for it to actually take effect for me to give my opinions. And I understand that there's already a lot of opinions on the internet about this, but I haven't seen too many from the perspective of a semi-competitive player who kind of bounces back and forth between competitiveness and casual, so I figured I would get that perspective out there and, yeah, just add to the um, opinion base on the internet about this point update, because there are some definitely some good stuff in here and some stuff that I am in complete confusion as to why it happened. So without further ado, let's dive in, starting off with all the rebel point changes. So we're going to start off with the four upgrades that were changed, starting off with Saw Gerrera, who was changed from 8 to 9 points. Now, for those of you who have forgotten his ability, I've thrown it up on screen, and I have it here for reference, and honestly, I don't understand the point of this change. I hadn't been seeing Saw perform even at casual events, so I'm not too sure why FFG chose to up the points of the ability perhaps just the sheer raw power of it maybe made them think that it he needed a bit more of a price to him but again he wasn't seeing that much play i honestly think he could have used a slight decrease maybe to seven points or something i don't know and for those who haven't seen it yet saw went up from eight to nine moving over to one of the gunners ezra went down by four points from 18 to 14 and yeah, this makes sense. He still should definitely cost a lot because he does give you that force charge and he does give some pretty nice um, options with his ability. At least I think it is. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, oh yeah, it's basically a veteran turret gunner that um, gives an ability if you're stressed. So I can understand why they're keeping this so high costed, but at least they brought him down a slight bit because 18 points is just way too much for an upgrade. Which is why like, my, I have a buddy, um, Cole, who you'll probably be seeing in a couple of X-Wing um, games that I'm filming right now. He re absolutely refuses to play Delta 7B because it costs like 18 points at the maximum and it's a pretty big investment. But I'm trying to talk him out of it. We'll see how that goes. But back on track. Up next, we have R2, who is moving from a static six points from everything to a variable cost based on the ship's agility. So if you're putting it on a zero or one agility ship, he now costs four points. A two agility ship costs five, and a three agility ship costs seven. So this basically means if you put it on a Y-wing, he costs four points. A T-65 X-wing will cost you two and a E-Wing will cost you three, so... Well, actually, Sheath of Peak would also cost five just because of um, it's, it's two agility and you can take an Astromech, so... I like the change. Definitely makes him a little better on um, T-65 X-Wings, but it also surprisingly makes him cheaper on Y-Wings, which makes them a slight bit um, more durable, but we'll see if it actually does cause him to see an increase in play, so that's, that's definitely an interesting one, but I understand where they're going with it. And finally, and I think this is one that everyone was expecting, Leia went up oh, quite a bit. She went from two points to six. I've already seen a lot of people saying this is the perfect balance because her original point cost of eight was just too much. Two was too way too cheap and was pretty much the reason Rebel Beef List took 
took off, excuse me. So bringing this up to six makes sense, and it actually fits with one of the um, things FFG wanted to do with this points update, which is try to more effectively cost, uh, quote, force multiplying abilities, which they describe as effects that it can apply to multiple ships throughout the squadron, and Leia was one of those that was definitely under-costed. So glad they finally changed that, and hopefully she still sees play, but more as a power piece that has a pretty hefty investment rather than just an automatic take in any list that has a Rebel crew slot available. So now we move over to the ships. Now there were a few ships that did not see any changes whatsoever and those are the attack shuttle, the Ozatuck gunship, um, I believe also, let's see here, I have a list right here and I'm flipping through the the RZ-1 A-Wing didn't see any changes. The Sheath of Peach Shuttle didn't see any changes. The YT-2400 didn't see any changes. And the VCX-100 didn't see any changes. Z-95s and Thailand Fighters. Now before we get into any of the changes, I want to talk about one of those ships, the YT-2400. I am extremely confused with FFG as to why they didn't do this. And they said on their live stream that, quote, Dash has been on the brink of competitive success for a while now, and I tried to find like high-level tournaments where Dash was on that brink they're talking about, and I couldn't find it for the life of me. Now, I, of course, I could be missing something here, but I was doing some pretty deep digging into trying to figure this out, so I'm one, pretty confident that Dash has not been seeing a whole lot of high-level play, and FFG's reasoning for this just makes me think they are too scared to lower Dash. So, yeah, if, if, if any FFG's employees are watching this by some miracle of fate, please lower Dash. I just, at the minimum, lower him to 90, and while you're at it, lower Outrider too, because I don't think anybody wants to be paying over 100 points for one ship outside of Epic play, because Epic is the whole other ball game since you're fielding a whole fleet, essentially. With this format... You don't want to be spending half your points on one ship because it gets blown up and then basically your opponent's won because then you only have a couple of maybe mid-level power pieces to fend off and they could still have their high-level pieces if you didn't somehow take them out. So not a fan of Dash staying where he is. Lebo and the Wild Space Fringer could also use some points decreases, but hopefully FFG sees that in the next point update and drops them down. So now that that rant is done, let's go over the things that actually did see changes, starting off with the B-Wing. So the generics are staying where they are, but Braylon and Ten Num are both going up. Braylon's going to 51 from 47, and Ten's going from 46 to 48. Now, this change makes a lot of sense because you did see these guys paired pretty frequently with each other. Now, that wasn't the root of the problem, but... It was with their other efficiency pieces that they were being put with that was causing the problem. So these guys going up definitely makes it way harder to fit them and some other pieces that were paired with them in the same list. And I, this, I think they were also some of the um, core pieces of those Rebel Beef lists that kept showing up everywhere. So I think that list now with Leia going up and these B-Wings going up is definitely going to have to break up a little bit. And you won't see, you'll still probably see Braylon and Ten in the same list together, but you won't see it with the same amount of efficiency pieces that you had previously seen with Rebel Beef lists, and I'm all in favor of that, just because, like, lists like that shouldn't... I mean, they are good, but when it's the only viable list in a faction, you need to do something about it just so that way other things have the chance to shine. So that's my opinion on the B-Wing changes. Moving over to the ARC-170 now, all the pilots went down except for Nora, who is staying at 55, so Shara's going down to 50 from 53, Garvin's going down to 49 from 51, and Ibtissam is going down to 48 from 50. Now, Ibtissam, I'm kind of indifferent to this change because I still think that, um, I think it's her ability, correct me if I'm wrong, her ability isn't that good i mean compared to 10 numb and braylon it's just it's just meh uh shara again same thing here her ability is nice but unless you have cards that uh, modify focuses without the need for a focus token it's not really that good or if you have support ships like benthic two tubes or garvin drace to provide focus tokens so in that regard it's a slight bit better and it gives you more room for those efficiency pieces to get shara's ability working but 
I, I'm, I'm mixed on this one. But Garvin dropping in points I like because... Now, again, I'm semi-casual with this, semi-competitive, but one thing that I found to be pretty interesting is the Garvin Perceptive Copilot combo. And I actually have a list that I am planning on testing here soon where it is Garvin, Drace, um, Benthic 2 tubes, and a Siege 2K2, that one K-Wing pilot that can um, let other ships spend his Falcon's tokens, but have them all on a list with Perceptive Copilot and... Gar just Garvin with Perceptive Copilot as a way to um, pass extra focus around and just give some action economy is nice. And now that we've seen that point drop, it opens up room for a couple for more expensive pilots. And again, like I've said before with other ships, gives more room for efficiency pieces. Or actually, no, I haven't said that with other ships. I just said that with um, Shara. So, because this is actually the first thing I'm recording right now for the um, act things that actually got changed. So. Ignore what I just said about me talking about other ships, but I'd like the change with Garvis or Garvis Garvan. Maybe a couple more points. Maybe going it down, bringing it down to 48 would be nice. But I like where it is now. Either way, and hopefully this does cause him to see a spike in play. And also, if I do sound kind of unscripted with this, that's because this kind of is. I felt like this something like this didn't really need a script since this is just me talking about my opinions. You'll definitely see some scripted stuff in the future for um, certain things, but this is not one of them. So if I sound a little weird and I'm jumping all over the place, that's why. So if you don't like that, sorry, but that's just the way I chose to do this. So now that we got that out of the way, we have our next three ships are the Y-Wing, the K-Wing, and the E-Wing. So starting with the Y-Wing, Everything is staying the same except for Dutch who went up by a point. And again, this goes back to FFG's um, reworking of um, ships with force multiplying abilities. And Dutch going up, I don't understand because, I'm, and please correctly if I, correct me, excuse me, if I'm wrong with this, but Dutch really wasn't seeing any play, so I'm not sure why they upped his points cost. Now, sure, it's only by one, but again, that could have a huge difference from getting a specific efficiency piece or not being able to take it and instead settling for an extra bid. So, not really in favor of this change just because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the grand scheme of things. But again, there's probably something I don't know, and just assume that there is something out there that I don't know. And I know that sounds like a terrible thing to say, but I don't want to make myself look like an idiot when it comes to this stuff, so kind of have to throw that disclaimer out there. Now, moving over to something that I do understand, K-Wings. Miranda and a Siege are both going down. Talked earlier about why I like a Siege going down when I was talking about Garvin. Same logic applies here. It gives more room for Perceptive Copilot and a couple of other things on other ships. Miranda going down after her ability got majorly nerfed, after FFG got scared, probably got scared by um, its power in first edition. She wasn't really seeing a whole lot of play. I had seen the occasional thing pop up here or there, but... Bringing her down a couple of points definitely gives her more room to play around with some stuff since she really does need that upgrade support in order to be viable. But then we look at the Warden Squadron pilot who's going up by two points. My guess is having a low initiative ordnance carrier like that was a little too good in FFG's mind. So they upped the points to try to prevent it from taking certain things. Maybe it had something to do with... Um, bombs, but considering it doesn't have a system slot and can't take trajectory simulator, I'm not too sh sure if that was the reason, but make I, I kind of see where this is going, but I'm kind of indifferent to this also. So finally rounding out this next one, we have the E-Wing. Corrin and Gavin are staying at their same points cost, but the generics, the Rogue Squadron Escort and the Nave Squadron Escort, both going down a couple of points. I mean, the, the fact that they're changing these to be a little cheaper is nice, but I don't think in the end when it comes to the E-Wing it's gonna matter because Corrin he's still okay but he's nowhere near first edition Gavin is just I don't know I, I I don't even remember what his ability is and I'm too lazy to go look it up so I'll just have it on screen just for you all to see and then the generics we're not see haven't really ever seen any play in either first edition or second edition and even with these points changes I'm honestly not sure that they will see play now. Maybe if they bring them below 50, that might make a difference, but my guess is they're taking this in slow little increments to try to prevent the game from breaking, like, instantly, and 
in order because I'm after first edition. I think they want to avoid that at all costs. So it makes sense why they the why they changed the E wings by the amount they did. But I would like to see a little more before I start to say that these generics might be viable. So our next ship then is the Hawk 290, and every pilot is going down by some amount. Jan by one, going down to 43. Uh, Rourke is going down to 41 from 43. Kyle is going down from 39 to 36. And the Rebel Scout is going down from 33 to 30. Now the decrease again is nice, and I just talked about why FSG is probably going in such little increments. But again, I feel like the Hawk, the Rebel Hawk at the very least, should go down a little more. I mean, Kyle's ability is nice, but then again, you have Benthic Two Tubes, Garvin Drace, and um, Siege Two K Two that can all basically do the same thing and provide it to more ships. So Kyle's probably not going to see any play because of that. And then Rourke. I mean, sure, bringing a ship up to Initiative 7 is nice, but if you want to do that, just maybe go play Imperials and take a cheap Inquisitor with um, a Heightened Perception or something. Then again, the Thai V1 really isn't that good. So maybe Rourke sees play now. I don't think so. Rebel Scout at 30 points. Uh, I was maybe saying maybe as a cheap bomb carrier, but again, the Y-Wing does that so much better. And I don't even think that the um, don't even think the Hawk has the gunner slot, so the Y wing is definitely better in terms of generics on that front. And Jan, I don't even know what her ability is. I'm throwing it up on screen for you, you to see, but like everything else, I just don't think the Hawk is cheap enough for it to really see play. So that's my opinion on that. We move, then move over to a freighter that definitely has seen some play, the modified YT thirteen hundred. Now this hasn't seen any points changes. But it did get changed since um, all Rebel 1300s now have lost their illicit slot and gained a second mod slot. So a couple of things that FFG wanted to do. They wanted to break up the Han inertial dampeners combo, which I didn't even know that was a thing. But after looking at it, I could see why they wanted to break it up. But they did also mention that um, they um, tr wanted to um, create some differentiation between the scum and the rebel and the resistance falcons. So having that second mod slot could lead to some interesting things. And maybe um, shield upgrade or actually I'm trying to think. Is there anything that could really help Lando? You know what? I'll leave that to you to discuss in the comments. Now that the um, falcon has gained its second mod slot, do you think that maybe the other pilots besides Han will see play, or will Han just continue to reign supreme in turn of that? In terms of that, so that's that. And then we'll move here to the T sixty five X wing, which only has one change, and that is wedge going up from fifty two to fifty five. Now. Wedges change, I like the fact that it's going up, but I don't like the quantity that it went up because Wedge's ability is still pretty potent in the grand scheme of things. It's sure, you don't have to jump through the amount of hoops you have to with stuff like Fen Rao or Vader, actually. But Wedge's... Um, the reason I don't like this is because that if you look at all the other Pilot Skill 6 initiatives... Or pilot skill six initiatives. I'm, you know what? While while I said that, I'm just gonna bring this up now. I adamantly refuse to call quote unquote initiative quote unquote initiative. It was created as pilot skill, and it will forever be pilot skill. I don't care what anyone says. So now that that little rant is done, if you look at all the other pilot skill six aces, they're all costed upwards in the 60s. So you look at the three that come to mind are Fen Rao, Anakin, and Vader. But then you look at Sutnir Fell and Wedge. They're only in the mid 50s, which I do not like at all because initiative sixes or initiative sixes, pilot skill sixes should not be that cheap at all. Sutnir also went up in this update, but he did not go up by enough. Wedge did not go by, up by enough. At, if, as long as they get within two of 60, so 58 at the minimum, I'm happy. But Wedge and Sutnir, and I'll explain Sutnir in the Imperial video, but Wedge is and Sutnir are just still both way too cheap. Like, sure, the three points will maybe prevent you from taking an astromech on Wedge, but he doesn't really need that to, in order to function. So, FFG, again, if you're somehow watching this, raise up Wedge's, um, Wedge's cost up to at least 58, and then 
he'll be in a much better spot because, well, he won't be in a quote-unquote better spot. He'll just be in a more balanced state because, again, mid-50s is not a good range for him. High 50s, low 60s is where I think he should stand, but what do I know? And after that, I think we only have one more change, and that is um, for the U-Wing. Cassian went up from 47 to 51. Again, he was a piece that was being used in those Rebel Beef lists. So seeing him b being bumped up definitely throws that list out of viability because it's now over 200 points. And yeah, it definitely opens up some more uh, some of the other pilots, specifically Benthic 2 Tubes, who I on is honestly my favorite U-Wing pilot, even though I don't play Rebels that often. But again, the Benthic 2 Tubes perceptive co-pilot combo, I have found to be pretty fun to mess around with. So now that Cassian Leia is ba essentially dead at this point, well, not dead, just a lot more expensive and possibly less viable. Because now that's a 57 piece. Um, I'm trying to do the math here on the fly. 57 points for Cassian Leia instead of 49. So Benthic 2 tubes is, um, let's see, what's 47 plus 8? I cannot do math on the fly. Okay, I, I'm doing math on the fly here. Just give me a moment here. And this is all being recorded in real time, in case any of you were wondering. It's a 55-point combo for Benthic 2 tubes plus um, Perceptive Copilot. So now that Leia Cassian is definitely a lot more expensive, this could be a fun thing to play around with. And again, I mentioned that one list earlier, but often if I'm looking for a action efficiency piece in a Rebel list, I'm often going to Benthic with... Um, perceptive co-pilots so hopefully other people start to play around with that and we'll see how that goes and with that that is all the rebel point changes for this update i'm not sure if i had any um true to definition hot takes in this but there was definitely some stuff that i think i disagree with most people on so go ahead and debate in the comments if you think i am right in these in my opinions of these or if i am misguided somewhere if I got some information wrong, please link me to a source that proves me wrong, because I, I, again, I don't know everything. I want to try to know as much as I can, though. So hopefully you enjoyed my take on all of this stuff. And, yeah, I'm probably going to be putting out either the Imperial or Scum analysis next. So hopefully you look forward to that. Peace out.